So guys, I set up the most incredible private performance of Bruno Mars at Jeremy's birthday dinner. So then if you did that, you should get your money back. <laughs> Let's go home. Welcome back to Call Her Daddy. I am your host, Alex. And you are Lauren with an L. Uh, I'm what? Lauren with an L. Lauren with an Oh wait, yeah, what the what the fuck's her? Oh my god, it's been so long. I don't even know what her name is. Sophia. With, uh, Sophia. Sophia. Oh yeah, Sophia. Sophia. With an F. With an F. Yes. Yes, 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 of course. So of you're course, Lauren with an N? R? or an R maybe. Got it. I don't know. Not well oh, in? you know, it'd be, it'd be like Lauren with an E because like some people spell it with a Y, like R-Y-N. True. So I'd be True. Lauren with an E. True. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop, drop, roll, rate the pod. And when I say rate the pod, we, you we, that, mean? Used, that used to be an Apple thing. That used to be a pod bean thing. That used to be an Amazon music thing. Pod that bean. used to be a serious thing. That used to be an iHeart music. Now, Spotify listeners, you too. Can rate the pod, <laughs> five stars. Um, welcome back to the pod, Tillards. Lauren is in, um, by popular demand, and by popular demand, I mean one individual who said, <laughs> I don't like when you dress that to Lauren. And now she is in full, what, Tana attire? No, uh, we got we got Tana Dizzy sweatpants on the bottom and we've got a uh, Brandy Melville uh, throwback uh, sweater, Malibu sweater on top. And most importantly, Bomba socks on the bottom. And Bomba socks on the bottom. Bombas, uh, Bombas, we are help. We are we are open to um, a lifetime sponsorship. We sure are. Um, but yeah, someone made a comment that I, it was like something that I was like, damn, that was kind of mean. Like it wasn't like a oh, like I, I like miss when you guys are like comfy. It oh, was it's like, one of those like. Is it just me or does Lauren look really uncomfortable and not attractive and cute? No. She, oh. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yes. It, it was, was even, like even a, meaner. It was an observation. It, but it was mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't an observation. It was like just actually straight up mean. And but so, did she mean for it to be mean? Probably. People on the internet don't fucking care. No, no, no. I, I'm never upset with when people want to be mean. Then they want to be mean. I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm upset when someone makes a, a just an right. honest <laughs> observation is like, it just mirrors like Jeremy really starting to get a lot less attractive, a lot less no, funny, no. a lot more dull, a lot whatever. Worse than that yeah. is like the backwards compliment. Like if like, just say oh. like I dyed my hair brown and mm. be like, oh my God, the brown looks so good. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. Like that blonde was rough. The brown, love oh, yeah. it. What an upgrade. It was about time you get rid of the blonde. Yeah, and was I was like, like, damn. I was blonde for 10 years. Literally. So anyways, mm. so someone made a comment about how disgusting or whatever, how negative I looked when I had real clothes on. So bitch, we are both winning now because I am one, so bloated, need to be in stretchy pants. And two- um, You look so cute today. Living my don't best- be uh-uh, you look so cute today. Am I not cute now? You look very cute right now. Okay. But you looked so cute earlier. I had to wear jeans for a meeting today and I came home and immediately ripped them off. I can't wait to dive into that meeting. Yeah, that'll be for later. Hmm, That's for we got agenda yeah. today. We've got agenda today. We've got, we've got, this has been a busy week. Like I feel like normally, you know, we've got a few fun things that have happened, but like, oh, I mean, if you're reading the title right now, like you already know. We haven't even said it yet. Yeah, but they can read, people can read. The title. Okay, maybe they just stumbled. This is their first time on the podcast. We came. So maybe, we maybe still somebody, have maybe somebody, a video title. Maybe somebody and a shuffled podcast title. Someone shuffled it to us. Mm. Anyway, um, big week though. Big huge week. week. So a couple things I want to cover. Okay, I want to talk about me having a birthday. Yes, thirty thirty. I want to talk about how Bruno Mars was at my birthday. Yes. I want to talk about how Anderson Pack was at my birthday. Yes. I want to talk about how Kim Kardashian is now getting Pete Davidson to move to Los Angeles. For your birthday. For my birthday. Yes. Um, I'm gonna talk about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for my birthday. Uh -huh. I'm gonna talk about um, Arcades for my birthday. Yes. And I'm gonna talk about the entire cast of New Girl coming on this podcast yes. soon yes. for my birthday. Wow. This is the fucking birthday week that just never ends. Dirty 30. A birthday palooza. Hopefully we've we've rolled the intro music by now, but- I'm I, sure we have. I'm think? sure we have, yes. Yes, you, there's, okay. no, there's no way. Should we do like a fun game where it's like, uh, I wonder if you're gonna say the funny thing or I'm gonna say the funny thing that becomes oh. the sound bite. We, don't, yeah. we haven't recorded the podcast yet. I know. But like, I'm saying moving forward, mm. you know how it's like kind of like meta yeah yeah, 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 it's me. It's me this week. You think? It's me, yeah. I am so excited to see the funny thing that you say, hear the funny thing you, and, and watch as yes. well. Yes, It's gonna be funny. Yeah. I can't wait for you, I'm so excited By for the way, you. I think you're hilarious. To be in my presence of we, hilarity. This is the issue. I don't think you're that funny on Twitter, but I do think you're funny everywhere else. Well, I've actually just completely abandoned being normal on Twitter and just completely selfishly using Twitter to talk and learn about crypto shit. You're a nerd. 
Yeah, I know. Okay, someone um, actually threatened to unfollow me because I made my profile picture a NFT. So Twitter now allows you to connect your- a very, a very, your very controversial topic. Very get, controversial hit, topic, yeah, hit yeah. It, go ahead. So Twitter allows you to connect your NFT wallet so you can like have a verified sure. NFT. So it's like all these like hundred bajillion dollar like apes. So like everyone's like, oh, the, time the right click, the right click save. Hundred, hundred bajillion dollar? Hundred bajillion dollar okay. NFT, the, the Board Ape Yacht Club. Okay. And so now you can verify that you actually own that NFT. It's very controversial. <laughs> Kinda. What do you mean? There's some issues around, is it actually legitimate? Cause it's like a web three to web two kind of thing. And mm -hmm. like, if, where's the bet? Can they change it? Can they alter it? How they- Making their best lot. effort. Yeah, you know what it is? Making their best as far, effort. As far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a step in some direction. Yeah. It's right or wrong. Yeah. They're, they're, so they're anyway, developing shit. The person wanted to unfollow me because I had an NFT as my profile picture. Weren't bothered when it was a profile photo of like this random guinea pig from a movie, like an animated guinea right. pig. Wasn't mad when it was Gary the snail from SpongeBob for Christmas. Very mad. It was mad Gary the it, snail? Yeah, remember my Gary profile photo for all of Christmas? It was Gary and he had a little Christmas. He had two Christmas hats, yes. one on each eyeball. Yes, one more time. One on each eyeball. That's a, okay. Yes. Okay. Two mini Christmas hats, Santa hats. Okay. Yeah. And then? And then now I have an NFT. Did they unfollow you? I don't know, they threatened to. I mean, they went another way to like make a tweet about unfollowing me, so they haven't yet. So I mean like, I really only Did you just, acknowledge them? No, only in my heart. Got it. And now. I wish you just commented back, I'm really gonna miss you. Cause then they would have said my queen and stayed. Well, normally if I had responded, it would have been like, bye bitch. But I didn't, but I didn't say that. You, I swear you're meaner <laughs> online than you are in person. I'm nicer online than I am in person. And it's That's like- a, so a, true. Yeah. That is so true. I'm way nicer online than in person. I'm super nice online until someone's mean to me. Oh, see to me, if you're mean to me, I'm just like, okay, you don't get my time anymore. Yeah, no, no. When someone's, when so, I'm like super nice. I'm all about like being so nice, so positive until someone like tries to shit on me or shit on someone else in my like- It's usually someone like someone else, yeah. Oh, bitch. Yeah, I, oh, but you know I get is? scared when someone like shits on me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, please don't let my girlfriend see this. <laughs> because of oh, the baby, the claws are coming out. You know what it is too, is that I think that I am so nice in 99.9% .9 of my life. And so it's like, you have this like pent up anger that I'm not like an angry person at all, but it's like when you have a reserve of anger that you rarely ever use. Yeah, I get it. You don't want to be the, you don't want to be the little bitch on Twitter, the Twitter troll who it all gets unleashed on. <clears throat> What's funny is, you know, it's kind of like, like the, the like nice, soft-spoken librarian that's the freak mm -hmm. in the sheets. It's kind of like you, but for Twitter fingers. Right, I wasn't, nice. I wasn't sure where that was going, but yes. I mean, we could go we could go a couple ways. Right, we could go a couple ways. <laughs> I'm so excited your parents are gonna be here in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> oh, that just took my train of thought. Hey, I, I know what I wanna do for Valentine's Day. Great. And um, also ladies, ladies, gentlemen, all of the, everyone listening, I am a firm believer that if you have an expectation of something that you want or want to do, you should, there is nothing wrong with putting it out into the world because then what? This is usually when Lauren announces she's already booked three nights at a hotel somewhere. <laughs> And well, half like, the trip. If you if you establish what your expectations are, it's it's much less likely that you will uh, have have your expectations not met. Or just don't have any expectations at all, and you'll nail it every time. It, impossible. Impossible. Yeah, I get it. Literally impossible. Yeah, I get it. Impossible. Remember Kim? Possible. Yeah, call me, beat me if you want to reach me. I just realized that Kim Possible is like impossible, but it's yeah, Kim, Kim Possible. possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rupert, the naked mole rat. Oh yeah. Oh no no, that was the friend. That was the guy. No wait. Ron. What? That's Ron Weasley. No, no, who's Rufus, Rufus. Rufus was the naked mole rat. I just want to get a quick a quick temperature read for everybody that's uh, close to <laughs> something that they can either comment or tweet on. Did you watch Kim Possible? Uh -huh. yes. Do you remember what we're talking about? Yes. Are you too young or old? Probably young. Who was the first person I said? Ron is the friend. Okay. Rufus is the naked mole rat. Okay. What was the first name that I threw up there? Unsure. Not sure. Anyways, um, was a big Rufus fan. I, yeah, I can see a bit of, I, we kind of have a Rufus. We kind of do have a Rufus yeah. basically. He yeah, kind yeah. of is a naked mole rat. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. I feel like a naked mole rat could be cute. Naked mole rats are fucking adorable. Are they real? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yes. Got it. Um, you know what's actually even cuter is a skinny pig. We can, we can move to the next. Is uh, the guinea pig with no fur. So They're you've got really expectations. I'm I sure said, you, where's your initiative? Where are we at with it? What are we doing for Valentine's day? So, okay. So now that, that Jeremy has like all of the, like the crypto arena hookup to like take oh, people God. there. I'm like, this is, this is my fucking time to like, to be able to like trade Jeremy's hookups for other people's hookups. What? 
Like you've got you've got amazing favors that we can take people to crypto arena. Okay. So I want to use that as currency oh, okay. for us to take people and I will be girlfriend of the year. I will host whoever you want to host and entertain whoever you want to entertain. Uh-huh. I will be the hostess with the absolute mostest okay. at crypto arena. But I think that we can use this as currency to do other fun things that people have the hookup for. Such as? I would like on February 14th. Yeah. My parents are here. So we do have a babysitter for the night while we go out. They're not gonna come with us? No, they're gonna watch they're gonna watch the baby. I genuinely think that we've been with your mom on Valentine's Day at least once <laughs> if, if not twice in our relationship. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, because she usually comes in February. Like I think this yeah. might be our second or third Valentine's Day with Gail, which means we are not leaving them at home. I think that so where I wanna go, you have to get a little dressed up. And so I think that my dad would really, really hate us if we dragged him somewhere. Come on. I, I really, he gets, he like literally stress sweats thinking about having to dress up and then stress sweats while getting dressed up. <laughs> Your family is so cute. The, the things that they get uh, worked up about are so uh-huh. cute. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe, maybe, but like what, what just, maybe just us. Okay, where do you wanna go? I would like okay. for Valentine's Day. Mm to use, and you've actually flexed before that you have the hookup for us to go here what? anytime. What? I want to go to the magic castle. You're kidding. What? Why? I just think it's fun. I've never been before. They're probably doing something cool on Valentine's day. By the way, we don't need to give up anything to go to the magic castle. Oh great, then we can just go. Yes. Wow, he got the hookup. I, by the <laughs> way, I'm going to have to scrounge through my DMs to figure out which one of these people uh-huh. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get into. Like, this is the issue. I'm gonna have to give up nothing cool. It's like a piece of my, oh my God. Oh, oh wow. I, I, everyone says it's so fun. Yes, yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. It, if we're going to the Magic Castle, your, your parents have to come. Okay, fine. I, I was I was actually thinking that. Yeah, they have yeah. to. They, okay. He is gonna have to wear like a suit though. Yeah, I know. Like with a with a full tie. He's gonna wanna, see, oh, he won't wanna do that. Greg would literally, he that's like his worst nightmare. It's, I think he would love it. But it's full tie? If you so if you show up and yeah. you're not dressed appropriately, uh-huh. they have their wardrobe suits and ties <laughs> yeah. and dresses like there. Wow. Yeah. They, and like it, they don't turn you away. They say, "Have right, take grab a, a tie. Yeah, grab a tie." Okay. Well, let's we'll we'll mull on that. We'll mull on in making it a drop. And for anyone who doesn't know who the Magic Castle is, it's um. So you're in the middle of Hollywood. Yes, there's a magic giant castle up on a hill. It's kind of like right in the middle of everything. It really is. One of those things that could not be possible if it wanted to get, like, get started today. Yeah. No way. That had no. to have already happened. It's like a vintage thing. Yeah. 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 And you can eat there. You can watch all the magic that you could ever want. There's you a could bunch of little stay rooms. stay there, right? I don't know if you could stay there anymore. Oh, anymore. Okay, I see. Maybe, maybe you can. Maybe like, I don't know if it's like a- but but I don't You know used to have like, like a hotel wing to it, It no? wouldn't surprise me, yeah. Yeah, I think they're- Yeah. But you also used to be like, be able to stay at Disney too. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But it's like a show, right? Like it's a big show. Oh, it's a big, yeah, big old. But like it's a bunch of little micro shows too. Oh, yeah. It's like there's a card room and there's like a um the a room. It's like kind of like a small little theater where there's like um you know those people who are able to come in and like uh guess like your birthday in oh, the back. Oh, they know exactly how much you weigh. Or like and yeah, stuff hey, like that. Let me yeah, see yeah, it yeah. in your wallet. Uh-huh. It's like uh, and they know exactly how much money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, wow. It's like lambskin condoms. Oh, they're expired. And you're like, how the. <laughs> Would you know that? Yeah, it's weird. Oh my God, that's so fun. Yeah. But that, that's kind of a good idea, right? For Valentine's Day dinner, just like something fun and extra rather than just going to like a regular restaurant. I'm, so there's two answers to this. Okay. I'm gonna tell you the first one, which is the right one. Yeah. Yes. Great idea. Thank you. The second answer, let me just be a contrarian. Okay. Okay. In my mind, mm-hmm. you saying, let's go to the Magic Castle yes. for Valentine's Day. Yes. Is what a completely out of touch dude would think would be a good place to take <laughs> his girlfriend on Valentine's Day. Okay, so then this is great then. For who? Everyone involved. I, okay, by the way, <laughs> I think we're gonna have fun, but you, you can see, you can, you can definitely, like I, I, here's what I'm hearing right now. Okay, here's what, what I'm hearing. hearing. And it's that, you know, the the, um, the meme where it's like the the guy or the girl like running back to tell like their boyfriend or girlfriend, like everything they just talked about with their friends. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you're like, the exact one I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When when it's like, uh, if like the guys spend the night with the guys, and then he gets to the car and he's sprinting back to the house to tell the girlfriend all the tea about what the guys have said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like every, like the hard ass thing out the window. Yes. I'm hearing in my head, you telling me yes. the story about how some of one of your other friends, who's a girl, uh-huh. is complaining about how her boyfriend took her there for Valentine's Day. Like I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing it through that lens. <laughs> 
oh, well, no, like in my mind, ever since I've lived in LA, I've right. never been. Yeah. And it's like, it's like this, not like elitist thing, but it's- It, it is a thing you can't ask your publicist to get you into. Right. That's and weird. so like what it started off as is like only actual magicians had the hookup, right? That's kind of like how it was. It was like, I feel like it was like magician society and you had to like know a magician yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that that's true. cool. That's kind of, that's not that far off from what, what it is now. I'm gonna have to find that's what a magician. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually might know someone who I, I know a- Why don't you start tweeting at magicians? Just- Yeah. What, you'll know that like I'm running out of options like two or three days before like right. the event. I'm just like, you just see me on, like on Twitter, just like at replying people like, pretty cool. I would be interested if you were the, if you were gonna be in town at the, at the, <laughs> at the castle any, any day now. Like, Babe, we have the Crypto Arena hookup to trade for this. I don't think you understand that that, that the, the, those are two currencies that don't overlap much. I, I, I think that you are, I think that you are not giving magicians enough credit for the ones who might like sports. Okay. Or Justin Bieber. Uh, okay. Bieber, I get. The Kid Leroy. Yeah. MGK. Yeah. I don't know that, yeah, okay. There's All these crossover there. By the way, everything's canceled, but sure. There's crossover there for, oh, really? Everything's canceled. All those shows are canceled? Kid Leroy, canceled. <gasps> yeah. Well, rescheduled. No. Yeah. It just shocks me that like, we can still go to a full capacity basketball game, but the Kid Leroy show is kid. I don't know. Anyways, anyways, that's what I'd like to do on Valentine's Day. Okay. If we can finesse it. Okay. And I don't think Greg will want to go. That's so disappointing. But maybe, but maybe feel it out, feel the situation to see how many, how many potential tickets we could get. Mm -hmm. And then we can suss out the Greg situation afterwards. Okay. And is there a backup out. option? I, well, that's my only idea. Okay. So what's funny about this whole scenario is that like, if you have expectations and you want to do it, yeah. you should just yeah. like go do it. Yeah. But you haven't done any of this. You've just, you've just now put this in my lap to figure out. Well, no, no, no. I was, I was just feeling it out. Getting a temperature read. Actually though, the one thing you did offer was more of the things that I would have to offer yes. and then make up for it yes. later on. I'm trying to get you to sell your body and soul. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, and no backup <laughs> option. I mean, I mean, if this doesn't work out, we can think of a backup option. Okay, what if, if this doesn't work out, we have to yeah. do something that Greg would want to do most that we wouldn't want to do as much. Like that go we... and just watch cars drive fast in a Well, I mean, line. he's literally going on Saturday when they're here. Are we going with him? No, we're not going with him. Why not? He likes going by himself. What if he, he just tells you that? Because he knows you wouldn't enjoy it, but he'd love, he'd love to show you. My dad for my entire life has driven by himself for the most part. Also, he's like a lone ranger. Like, you know what I mean? I saw this meme the other day about how like- He's basically Chuck Norris of how, how like husbands a lot of the time, like just straight dudes, just like don't really have that many friends. Like when they get older, they have like friends that are their wives, friends, husbands. Like you don't have friends. You have a wife who has friends. Yes. Who has husbands. Yes. And yeah. those husbands are the people that you hang out with. What was the, the tweet that I just saw and that everyone's talking about? Like dudes, like dudes make like three friends at 15 and then just stop yes, socializing just them. the rest of their life. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think you're, you're an exception because you're like an overly social person, but like what? My, my inbox would disagree. You don't, you don't text me back anymore. I'm like, dude. It says you're so social. Yeah. You're like socially trained. Socially trained? Drained, drained oh. with a D, with a D. Got it. Also trained, also trained. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when you're a salesperson, you have to be socially trained. There's a couple things. For sure. Um, and speaking of socially drained, we did so many things this past week for your birthday palooza. We did. So many things. You only turned 30 once, Yoto. Want to make it easy to refresh your wardrobe with seasonal pieces that feel like you? That's where Stitch Fix comes in. When it's time to update your closet, you can schedule a fix and a stylist will send you five pieces that fit your style, size, and price range with no subscription required. Keep what you like and return the rest. Stitch Fix is the perfect solution when you feel like you're wearing outfit repeats and just wanna feel good in something new. They make it so easy with their style quiz where they can learn your preferences from your favorite colors to preferred fits and price ranges. They work with amazing brands like Madewell, Under Armour, Sanctuary, Uggs, Steve Madden, and so many more. So you can trust the quality that you're getting. I just received my first package from Stitch Fix and I got so many cute things. Honestly, the 
highlight were these um, like nude, like brownish Ugg strap strap. They're like, they're like slipper, but the strappy. So I have them in pink already, but I wore them on the set of Craftopia and they are, they're literally caked on the bottom with glitter and confetti. Like that sounds so cliche that it sounds fake, but it's not. And Stitch Fix literally from my quiz understood that I needed a new pair and it was the highlight of my box. So when you have choice paralysis, that's it's a good place to start. I've got a neutral and I've got a pink. Okay, good. It's time to get the looks that feel like you and get started by filling out your freestyle quiz at stitchfix.com slash wild nine and take advantage of free shipping and returns. That's stitchfix.com slash wild nine to try Stitch Fix. Stitchfix.com slash wild nine. It's Yoto. Like really like Yato. Yeah, it's more like Yato. Like Yato. Motto, Yato. Wow, I'm so glad that we didn't piece that together pre-30. Yeah. That would have got annoying quick. You're about to be 29. In seven months. That's so far away. Oop. I have a <laughs> year and seven months to make Forbes 30 under 30. Gross. Stressed. Don't, literally make your own list. I want to make my own list. I want to be on that list. I, one of us should be on that list. Yeah. And well, it's, and now it has to be me. You're 30. I feel like there's a couple more lists, but yes, definitely. I think there's other ones where it's like 35 under 35. I, th I feel like the categories start shifting a little bit. Well, I think they all like are just mimicking that one thing. Mm. Like 40 under 40, not exciting. No. No. I want to be 30 under 30. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you could do it by the way. We'll see. Maybe we'll see. We'll see what this next year, this year will be a, a pivotal year for me and we'll see what happens. If I'm still spiraling in 11 months, then maybe we'll take that goal off the list. I'm excited to see what your spiral leads to. Me, me too. Back to me. So it was a fun <laughs> birthday week. Uh huh. We had, we had company in town. Yep. So um, Jeremy's bestie flew in. He was here with us for like nine days. <laughs> right. And like, what was it? It was supposed to be what, five days, six days? No, you know what? It was a Tuesday to a Sunday right. and then became Tuesday to a Wednesday. So eight days. Yeah. Tuesday to Sunday is a lot less time than Tuesday to Wednesday. Oh my God. Yeah. We tacked on three extra days. Mind you, there's some activities this weekend. I wish that he was still here for. Yeah. So like, I just wish we, we could almost, have... we almost got him to stay another extra four days. <laughs> One was close. I could, I could, he has the um, emotional intelligence yes. to leave before uh, we would want him to. Before he overstay your welcome. Right. So like yeah. he checked, even though I think we both meant it, we're like, you should take a couple more days. It'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. He knew that the chances of running into a, mm. oh, I should have gone yesterday. Or every time we extend, you yeah, never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. So like, good on him. Yeah, good on him. Good on him. Yeah. There are some people that don't have that. They really don't have that. I can't stand those people. We had we had a little run in not too long ago. Oh, did we? We did have a little run in. Mm. Yeah. They, can't think of anything. Yeah, I can't think of anything. <laughs> no, there's just um, we. I feel like maybe it's post a post COVID thing. It's like having people. But also, anyone in your space for longer than a week is like is is like a lot, and and it changes too. Like it varies on how needy that person is. But not just okay. Let's all set the table. Let's 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 set the let's tone set the table. here. Let's set, yeah, <laughs> let's set the table. Let's sit down. Have it. so no, I'm. You know, people who, when you're in a room with them, mm -hmm. their presence changes the energy of the room. In a good way or a bad way. Couldn't have said it better yeah, myself. Yes, yes. Because some people are exuding this like. You just make me happy when you're around. Remember that one character in uh, What We Do in the Shadows that was the energy vampire? Yes. Do you remember him? Yes. That is exactly what, the, like that is that is a thing that exists in real life. Not may, I don't know, maybe vampires aren't real, I don't really know. But like the energy of an Comment energy- Comment below if you're a vampire. It, <laughs> the energy of like an energy vampire is so fucking real that just like yes. being around a person and they might not even like seem overly negative, but they just drain you it's so not about, fast. It's not about being negative. No. It's like, the the social cue of talking about a thing that if the entire rest of the room yeah. is on one page and you just keep going back to the other one, that's a draining. It's not, it's, it's like that, but it's also just like, they're just like energy. And like, I feel like I'm someone who can pick up on that. Like not to be like, I'm an empath, but like when someone's energy- one more time. I'm an empath. Got it. <laughs> But like when someone's energy is off like that, like whether it be that they just like, you feel like they don't want to be there or they're giving off like a, I am better than thou type of vibe. Like there's just so many ways that someone can be an empire, an, an, an empire, an energy vampire. 
Not to yeah. be confused with empires who um, do the baseball stuff. Huh. Sorry, who? An empire? Oh, is it umpire? Oh. <laughs> Not again! It's been so long since we had one of these. Fuck! <laughs> no! It's been so long. Your referee. I get it. <laughs> Your referee. Yeah. I actually am going to a dog park tomorrow where they have referees. Okay. Love that. Wow, fuck, Empire. Look at you. I, ca I can't even see myself, I'm so low as the camera in the way, I can't see. The uh, point is, um, yes. Oh man, it's yeah. been so long. I will say, you, you know what? One of the most common tweets that I get from people mm -hmm. is that every time that they see the word Sagu now in- um, Common language. A, in Com yeah. Common language, just out in the world. It's Sagu. Like, uh, that is the most, that the, that is like the, the conversation that had the most staying power of this entire podcast. I would say Sagu and Gray Sweatpant Ween are our two standout moments. Okay. And I couldn't have asked for anything better. I really feel like we've peaked so early. Yeah, Sagu happened pretty early. Yeah. That really set the tone for my um, my IQ, I feel like back then. No, <laughs> no. Oh man, it's been so long You're since that quirky. happened. It's fun. Anyway. Ew, uh, no, quirky is such a like quirky. The word quirky now is an insult. Why is quirky an insult? <laughs> Did I say insult? No, I'm just fucking <laughs> I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Quirky is an insult now because on social me me oh I get it. I yeah. have, what, do I have two brain cells? Social meep meeps. It's, <laughs> it's cause it's 10 PM. <laughs> oh my God. What I was gonna say is that people on social meep meeps have made the word quirky, like ironic. Okay. They'll be like when someone does something really fucking weird and like everyone just like collectively agrees that like that's weird and like and like right like it gives you like the ick. They'll be like, I'm quirky. And they like make it, they make it like a weird, like cringy thing. They oh they've basically turned quirky into cringy. Mm. Yeah. But cringe is it's cringy. Yeah. That's the that's the definition of cringe. Right. You can't use quirky for cringe. They're not they're not entirely interchangeable, but they're definitely linked now. And we can take we can th thank TikTok for that. There's a short sagu from yes. cringe to quirk. Yes, I got it. Yeah, there's, okay. a, there's definitely some overlap in the Venn diagram. There's for sure overlap. Okay, yes. the delta is the delta. small. Yes, small. small. Oh man, it's really been so long since I had one of those 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 little fuck ups. At least empire is an actual thing. Like I didn't make that word up. You know what I mean? Like that's a real word. It's just not the word that I was going for, which was umpire, the ump. Not to mention umpire and empire, not close. No, not at all. No, not very, even, not that Venn related. diagram, not no touching. overlap. No overlap, none, none at all. Um, okay, so where were we? Uh, so energy, got it. Do you think it's more often that, uh, well, this is just unfair to say, and it has no scientific facts, so we'll dive in. Do you think guys or women are more often energy vampires? See, it's hard to say because like, I'm, I wanna say women, but I think that's also because I've had just like more, I've spent more time collectively over like, like hangouts and sleepovers and friends and growing up and stuff like that. Like I've spent more time with girls. And so I feel like- Have you? Yeah, for sure. Like growing up and in high school and okay. college for the most part, like I had like a massive group of girlfriends. I feel like you always hang with the boys. Yeah, I mean, I, lo I love hanging, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Fuck, what, what's the word? It's it's so cringy, but it's like, it's not bruh girl. Mm, it's like quirky. <laughs> it's like quirky. Did I get it? No, I, 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 kind of, kind of, kind of. It wasn't quite the right time, but it was like, okay, fine. anyways, anyways, I think that I've a bra been- A girl? No, no, that's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a bruh girl. What's a bruh girl? Me as a bruh girl. Bruh girl? Yeah. What does that mean? B-R-U-H. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, let me let me get you the official Urban Dictionary um, description of a bra girl. Okay, here we go. A bra girl, and this is this is obviously a very very um, scientifically accurate description. We said Urban Dictionary. Yes. Yeah. A bra girl is the type of girl who doesn't care about appearances, eats plenty, swears, burps, drinks, and essentially one of the guys. That's like a that's like a minor insult there. Oh, for sure. She's one of the, she's the one who says bruh to her parents and enjoys stereotypical male pursuits. Finding softness and feminine pretty things cringe. Ick. Ick. Got it. And that's Mia? 
like she, it's like the tattoos, like the the bro working out vibes, okay. like right. the protein powder. Okay. She's like a bro girl in the sense that she's not like a, like a, and so the opposite of the bro girl, this is like OG TikTok culture, by the way. Like, I'm so glad that we've made it here and you're being enlightened. Yeah, there's this is like, not on my, my agenda, but we can, we can take a detour. Yeah, there's like the bro girl and then the opposite. And so they really only, there's only like really a dichotomy, which is not leaving a lot of space for someone to like really identify with what they are, like really only having two options. What's the other, what's the other option? But the bro girl and mm. then we've got, and it's literally described as an emoji. It's the emoji with like the puppy dog eyes where it's like the big eyes with the little white glisten in them. You know where it's like? Yeah. That's the other option you have. You've got the bro girl and you've got the the like, like cute blinky eye one. But what, we don't know, there's no name for it? I don't like, what's, uh, let's see. I, don't, I forget what that's called. This is kind of like, um, Ew, oh my God. Um, ew, okay, so the way so the way that this article describes like the, the little blinky puppy eye dog, whatever girl is either a high with three eye girl or the pleading eye girl. I hate that. Oh, I hate this. I, let's, let's get off that. I don't, I don't, I can't even, I can't get behind this. It's literally a bro girl or a me, 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 whatever girl. I, I can't, I can't. How do we get here? <laughs> I don't I'm know sure. how we got here. Oh, energy vampires. I think that I've interacted with more female energy vampires. Did you take your ADD medicine today? <laughs> no. No, you didn't. I did um, take a nap though. You did, you did. Not helping very much. Not yeah. helping, yeah. no. Okay, uh, well, not that I don't wanna go down whatever that is anymore, but um, <laughs> point is, I think you do great hanging out with just dudes. I think so too. Yeah, I think you actually, you, you shine. I really, I really thrive. It's crazy you didn't have more of a period in your life where you're just a single girl hanging out with the dudes. Yeah, I know, it really is. I, I feel like that, that that type of girl could, that could be you. I really could have thrived in that situation for sure. But you would have wanted to date all of them immediately. Yes, 100%. Yeah. I'm a notoriously brutal serial Like dater. you would have got, you would have been friends with somebody for five years for whatever reason, become single and then immediately just like, I, they could be good to me, I'll fix them. It'll oh be my fine. god! Yeah, I'll, what, what were we just watching the other day? Oh, when we're watching Euphoria, when I see people like Fez, like Fezco, right. like there's something in you. Me. Want to admit to what, you want to talk about it? Well, no. We when I see people like that, I'm like, I can fix him. <laughs> what? Well, and then so and you saw me and said, I can fix him. <laughs> I want you to know that I thought you were perfect the moment we met. That's so here nice. we are. Here we Still are. Still perfect. Still perfect. Just thicker. And thicker. Us. Love that. Friends. Anyway, so Fez um, from Euphoria, for those of you who don't know it, that would be my girlfriend's number one uh, hall pass at this point. Uh, no, it wouldn't be hall pass, but like when, when I like see, okay, and also too, there's something that I see like in that whole, you know what it is actually? It's this type of relationship that keeps happening over and over again. So like, you know that like, um, what's her face? Sydney Sweeney's, younger sister who's like all innocent and pure, that dark hair girl, like yes. her name's Lexi. Yeah. Like with her and Fez having like a little thing, it's like he's the drug dealer with like the broken past and she's like the pure wholesome girl. It's like fucking take that and copy paste that with like Ariana Grande, Mac Miller, okay. Megan Fox and MGK. Okay. She's, I wouldn't say she's like the definition of like wholesome and pure, but whatever. She's like the definition of like perfect. Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. Okay. Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson. Like that is a literal like copy and paste of like wholesome looking girl. And I don't wanna say broken looking dude, but like alternative <laughs> edgy looking guy. Um, Yeah, yeah. Copy paste. Yeah, I, I'm out of the game. I would have, I'd have no chance anymore. Uh, I, flashback to our last episode. Um, unconventionally hot. Unconventionally, not, not yeah, yeah. Conventionally hot guys are are being phased out apparently. I get it, yeah. We're, there's There's been a software update. Yes. The Everyone's grimier. Right, everyone, <laughs> right. It's a little bit of just um, grime. Grime. comes with you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so if you kind of fit into that, other, if you're not in that mold, yeah. you're out. Well, okay, I will say is that like when we- God, you've got opinions on this one, I love it. When we started, when we started, uh, we went on our first date, there was actually a moment where I was like, things seem too normal. And like, that was almost alarming for me because I'd been in so many other relationships where it's like, I can't fix him. So it was almost a red flag that everything seemed so normal because it's like a, a situation that I'd never encountered before. I think you should talk about this with your therapist. <laughs> no, but like, I, I, and I think that's why 
I was okay. Like, I mean, I, my plan was to be single for a very long time, right? After right. coming out of my last relationship. And then I think the only reason I was willing to get into another relationship, I was like, this is oddly really normal and good and healthy. I should maybe try this. Yeah. There's something in there. <laughs> uh, that's the thing that, and maybe, maybe I just don't know my guy friends that do that. That's mm -hmm. not a thing that guys don't, that's not a thing that computes. Yeah. Like, oh, this girl's got nothing wrong with her. Something's wrong with her. Like we don't, we don't, I don't I've never had that conversation with a dude. Hmm. Like it's, dude, she's too perfect. She's too hot. She's too normal. She's too fun to hang out with. Yeah. I feel like I've had that conversation with, with some guys before about their like girlfriends and what? stuff like that. Yeah. What do you mean? Elaborate. Were they, were they just like, they're insecure because they feel like the girl's out of their league. Okay, but that's different. That's a them thing. Well, I think this could be a me thing too. <laughs> By the way, it is a you thing, but like at least they're thinking like they're out of my league. Right. So the, versus like, what's wrong with this guy? Everything's too normal. Hmm. <laughs> like in your mind at the time, yeah. you thought it was a me thing, not a, not a you thing. No, no, I, I definitely know that it's a me thing. Okay, but at the time. No, 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 like uh, it's, it's, it's an us thing. I cannot actually, I can wait and I don't think this should ever actually happen, but okay. I think it's gonna happen before the end of our lifetime. Uh -huh. The idea of being able to like, if Elon gets his way, record your memories and track them and like upload them somewhere and that play them back. That is literally happening with his neural yeah. thing. I don't think any of us are going to be prepared for just how cringy our actual thoughts are the moment after they've happened. Oh, I don't wanna, I, I have no, I have no interest in having that situation. Which brings up a completely random thought that I cannot wait to talk about that is very much off topic of Bruno Mars being at my birthday party. I said, we even hit the agenda no. yet at all. Would you be interested if you could find out yes. how you're gonna die? Would you wanna know? No. Why? Because if they were like, you're gonna get into a car accident, mm -hmm. every time I'm in a car, I'm like, this, this is, is fucking it. it. This is it. Okay. Here are my passwords. Would you wanna know when you were gonna die? Uh, I'm leaning towards yes. Really? I'm leaning towards yes. You're sick fuck. Because I think that if someone, here's what, here's what, here's my thinking, is that I think if there was a world where I were to tragically die at like 45 and I found that out, I would make a point to live my life very differently in case that did actually end up coming to fruition. See, that's okay. Uh, by the way, I, I hear you. <laughs> I understand where you got there, I, I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like, you should just live your life like you're gonna die at 45 anyway. Right, but uh, maybe I'd watch one less Netflix episode. You know what I mean? No, watch, watch your episode. But like, if maybe you I'd watch, watch it. One, one less. But if you wanna watch it, watch it. Yeah, but I feel like when you come out of watching like most Netflix things, you're like, I feel like a degenerate right now. But like, I, to me. No, I get what you're saying. Okay, yeah, maybe I wouldn't wanna know. Because sometimes I need to feel like, okay. I also wouldn't want to have a countdown clock to like when I'm going to die. And if you knew, yeah, you would you would start the day. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny Putting though. down the, like the marker and putting your new day. <laughs> it would it'd just be like, if I were going to die in like 13 years and 12 days, if we were to like get into a fight tomorrow, I'd be like, I'm going to die in 13 days. Or, I'm going to die in 13 years and 12 days. You have to be nice to me. Yeah, no, I have no interest in knowing. None. You're right. I, I take that back. I don't want to know. But no, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't. No, I take it back. I thought about it. And by the way, if you did find out and you had that information, I'm leaving tomorrow. There's no way this works. <gasps> For sure. You'd, oh, be, oh, oh, you'd be unbearable. Oh, oh. You'd be unbearable. Babe. You would be unbearable. Oh, come on. No, I, we need to have some surprise in our life. Except for what we're doing on Valentine's Day, right? No, that we're gonna be at, <laughs> right. And, and if you live in LA, you know where we're gonna be. Why don't you meet us there? <laughs> on February 14th. <laughs> and if you've got a hook up, make my life easier and comment it below. Um, okay, yeah, so you're not interested in knowing that. Is there anything you wish that you could know when it was gonna happen before it happened? Um, I mean, I think that like anything, ah, see, fuck. I guess, okay, so here's where my brain went. You love control. Love control. My brain went in 19 different directions and we're reining it in, trying to rein it in. I think that there are times when things need to go wrong because you're gonna learn something from it. Okay. But I also feel like sometimes you just get shit on so bad that you're like, what the fuck? And so I feel like 
in those moments where something like really fucked up is gonna happen, I would like to know so I could just not have that happen to like prevent a little bit of trauma. Okay. I'm saying a sprinkling of trauma makes character. Okay. A wave, a mountain, a monsoon of trauma is too much trauma. Okay. A sprinkle, character. Okay. The rest of it, too much. We don't want that shit. We don't want it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Now I know. Yeah. I, I get it now. Would you want to know? What, do you, what would you want to know? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. What? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. All right, Tillards, are you looking for a way to boost that creativity, maybe help with sleep, anxiety, or pain, or maybe even just enjoy living in the moment? Today's sponsor is here to help. Microdose gummies deliver entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. Microdosing is a practice you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day life to really help you in all the ways that, you know, I just said. When I started taking mine, I noticed a bit of a decrease in the amount of stress I was feeling with work. And each gummy has just enough to take the edge off, but you can still be focused and clear headed. Personally, I've been taking them specifically to boost my creativity. The wild berry is my favorite flavor, but they have other options to choose from. Microdose is available nationwide. And to learn about microdosing THC, just do a quick search online or go to microdosegummies.com and use code WILD to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description, but again, that's microdosegummies dot com code wild because it doesn't matter yes it doesn't matter it doesn't like matter in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter well, one it doesn't matter and two oh I'm my god we're having like one of those life moments where like life is nothing no life is everything but on the flip side it could also be nothing no life is everything and <laughs> I, but no because i am so incredibly dull and dim when are we way. getting to bruno mars <laughs> I'm someone that if you told me right now, then when we walk out this door, uh -huh. something is gonna happen that's my fault yes. or whatever. And I'm in control, I'd be like, fuck you. And then it would happen, I'd go, damn, they're right. Like it, it, mm. I, the, the things that go wrong in my life that are my fault, I, there's, they're unavoidable. I, I, it has to happen to me for me to go, oh, that is an option. Well, I don't wanna do that anymore. Mm. Like, you know how some people learn from other people's mistakes? There's not, I've never learned from anybody else's mistake ever once. I actually wish that I could learn from other people's mistakes less what? than I do. What do you mean? How does that make sense? That's what? Because that's what creates anxiety. I see something happen to someone else and I'm like, oh my God, what if that happens to me? Oh my God, that's a possibility. Actually, that's a great, great comment. Cause my mom would always tell me how, well, Jeremy, make sure that if you're yeah. you know, in the car you never and know. There's, snow, there's snow, you'll have snow boots and um, enough money and yes. gas to get to between here and-, and Because it's happened four. to someone that they knew. Right. That's what I'm saying. Oh. And I mean, like that's that's so much of what anxiety is based Wait, on, right? Where are you guys going? No, a couple of years ago, there was someone that was over there this yes. time. And like, what? Yes. And huh? you know what? Sometimes, sometimes those concerns are valid. You know what of I mean? Of course. Like if so many people get eaten in this one spot by sharks, it's like, okay, maybe we don't swim there. Like right. it's happened to so many people. That this is probably a learning opportunity for there to be no more shark snack situations. I don't know why we're going to sharks, but yes. I don't know, it's where first place my brain went. Okay. But I, I, so much of anxiety is like the anticipatory anxiety of something happening. Uh -huh. And so much of the time it hasn't ever happened to you and will never happen to you. Right. I mean, that's the whole thing with like having emetophobia, right? Is that like I've thrown up three times in my entire life. I can count on one hand, but like it controls my life. Right. And so like, I, I think about seeing someone who threw up on a bus or someone who threw up on a plane and I'm like, that could happen to me. So I need to be paralyzed in anxiety. What a way to live. What a way to live. So Bruno Mars. So Bruno Mars. So guys, I set up the most incredible private performance of Bruno Mars at Jeremy's birthday dinner. Uh, well, okay. So then if you did that, you should get your money back. <laughs> because although he was there. So what happened? So what happened? Walk us through it. What you mean? I you walk us through it. No, I, I mean, I spent so much time planning and playing party planner. I want you to give me the, give me the recap of the experience. Tell me I did a good God, job. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank um, <laughs> So Lauren um, did a nice job of booking out a venue that is specifically geared towards people who do not want to be seen places. Don't want to be seen places, <laughs> you know? Kind of, yeah. Cause you know, it's one of those clubs like you go in, you cannot, it's not that you can't use your phone, but like you can't be on your phone. You can't take pictures. You can't right. like right. the whole idea of like, once you're in there, you're not have to worry about like some dickhead, like look, it's Drake, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we're in there and Lauren did a nice job of getting a table for like 14 people. Mm -hmm. And then after a, the table of 14 people had had dinner, then we got another 14 people to come in. That, 16. 
Yeah, that's well, I, I both- Turned out to be much higher than that. <laughs> My bad. Uh, but we sat down for dinner at this place. Not but three minutes in, I just hear, do you see who's over there? Uh, nope. Look over to my left. It's my favorite artist of all time. Fun fact, Jeremy loves Bruno Mars. Loves. Loves. And you know what's crazy? Like now that I'm thinking about it, I wasn't starstruck. Yeah. I, I don't, I feel I'm like disappointed in myself. You don't really fanboy though. I've never really seen you fanboy. Yeah, but that, I, if you would, if someone walked in right now and said, hey, Bruno Mars is gonna be behind at your birthday, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. This is gonna sound a little bit harsh, oh, but he's no. such a small guy. I know, and he packs a punch. He does pack a punch. I mean, the efficiency in that man's body. It truly is. Yeah. That man can can perform. Probably the many runnings of like, cocaine. I think there's probably something psychologically when someone is like very large and like physically takes up a lot of space. Like I wonder if that's a more like impactful. Fun fun sagu into the other person that we met yes. this week, which was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who, who is, is a large seven, man. Uh, seven three. Is he seven? Eight foot 14. I mean, the man is large. Seven two. Yeah, and like I don't, I don't know when the last time you saw uh, an eighty-year-old seven foot two guy, but I don't think I had ever really seen one. Seventy-four. Come on. Okay, fine. Seventy-four. Point is, uh, dude uh, showed up at, at the arena and obviously came to the suite. Very nice, sweet guy. Signed everything. I have more signatures from Kareem Abdul Jabbar than I will ever know what to do at this point. Yes, you can't have any. But the contrast between there's two Brunos to one Kareem. I would say four Brunos. You think? I think like a two by two situation. Got it. Yeah. It's funny, I've, I've, after I saw him, I've, I've like seen some clips of him playing basketball since and it's like, whoa. He's huge. Monstrous. Like insane, like, Monstrous. like shockingly huge. 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 Well, cause he's in a wheelchair now. Yes. And so when he when he came and I was opening the door and I was like, hey, come on inside. He stood up and I was like, oh my he God. Literally it is, is shock. Like, I mean, he's it, almost it, like, a foot taller than me. Yeah. It, it literally it like leaves you speechless. I'm fucking tall. You're tall. This man's you know almost actually, a foot taller than me. Our friend made a really, he, he, I'd never heard someone say this before. Like you are at the very end of normal tall. On the scale of tallness. Uh -huh. I'm you're at I the, agree, but You're continue. at the very, like six four is the end of normal tall. As soon as you get over six four, mm -hmm. you're like, oh damn, like you're tall. But like six four, you're like, oh, you're tall. Well, also I think anything above like six foot, six foot one, six two, six three or whatever, like mm -hmm. you're tall in people's mind. Yeah. And at, at a certain point in time, until you become a giant, Oh, they, I thought they were always tall. And so his theory is that 5'10 is the end of normal tall. No, wait, was 5'11? So he was saying that like tall is like 5'11 to 6'4. And then anything under like the 5'10, 5'11. 5 5'11 5 is not tall. No, but like you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be considered short. You'd be like, no. you know, like averages. To me though, 5'10 is, is honestly, from my vantage point. Uh -huh. Am I biased? Yes. 5'10 for a guy yeah. in America, because in some countries you're just shorter, you just are. Yeah. 5'10 in America is the last height that's not, what was the, the terminology for too tall? Normal normal tall? You're normal, you're at the end of normal tall. I think 5'10 is the end of normal short. No, that'd be the top of normal short. I guess. Right? Like, I guess. Like yeah. normal short would be like probably like what, like five, seven. Let's offend so, everybody. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> like normal short would be like five, seven to like five, 10. Yeah. No, I, it's like not short, it's like normal. I could say with the utmost Fuck. certainty, my funniest friends are five foot seven. I think back to the guys that like I, I grew up with uh -huh. that were short as hell and just. You know what though? I feel like a lot of that is built on their insecurity of people like us who are fueling the stereotype of tall equaling being better. <laughs> I'm not saying it's better. Um, I'm just saying you get a better seat or, you know. I'm, uh, I'm saying that to me personally is more attractive. I know that you think that. Yeah. 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 No, you're hinged. But it's also the same way that like, that, that, some, that someone could be like, oh, I think dark hair is more attractive. Oh, but I guess you can change that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't <sighs> quite fight my own battle for myself yeah, that there. Great. Um, that wasn't great. We all have preferences. Yeah, yeah. The, the, my, my, my whole point is when I, walk into a room. If uh -huh. someone is noticeably taller than me, they're fucking tall. Right. Tall. And this man towered. Monstrous. Towered. Do taller guys have bigger dicks? I wonder if- Can we get the science on this? Yeah, so I wonder if this like scientifically- No, we've all looked this up. It's like, yes, no, it's no, there's no correlation, this and that. Is it? I just want to know, there's gotta be someone Do out there taller in- taller 
We've all thought of this, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Or am I, I the have only we dude? Not, have we not talked about this? Maybe, but if we uh, have, and I, I, mean, I forget the answer. Tilly's we welcome back on a new episode, a new take yeah. on this. I. What do we think? <laughs> Some results may be explicit. Most people think that a tall man will usually have a large penis, but that is not entirely true. The largest, oh my God, the largest organ recorded was 14 centimeters, 5.5 inches in a flaccid state. Flaccid. Wait, what? A soft dick. The can largest we, can soft- Can I get inches, please? 5.5. I said that. That was the largest flaccid penis ever? Yeah, largest organ recorded. I, that's false. <laughs> have you seen bigger ones? I've seen bigger ones, yes. <laughs> the smallest penis, Measured six centimeters, 2.25 inches. It belonged to a fairly heavy built man of 5'11". So this man had the smallest penis ever and he went and got it verified? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That, listen, that guy, I guarantee mm. right now, Lauren, that guy, funnier than anyone you've ever met. Okay, so what? Oh, wait, hang on. There's nothing less accurate than dick facts. Yes, yeah, seriously, because it's not like men are lining up to have their dicks no. measured to like contribute all. to the consensus of not like what's happening. Bit. Not even a little bit. Okay, let's go back. So Bruno Mars yep. at the table behind us, like direct, like within like a four foot, like they were the table directly next yep. to us. Yep. And he was with- um, Anderson Pack. Anderson Pack. And yep. then also two of the guys from like the hooligans, yep. like his musician yep. um, counterparts. It was my dream. Your dream. Which is Lauren. Yes. Next to Bruno Mars. Yes. yes, literally yes. I mean, you nailed it. I could not have planned a better birthday. And so what happens halfway through? One of the guys stands up and just says, hey, I'm just gonna play with you a little bit. And and, and also pulls a trumpet out of fucking nowhere. Pulls a trumpet out of his ass and starts just performing. And at first he had like the little silencer on it. Yeah. And it was like, and it was like, he and we're like, oh my God, fun. And, and then, then said, everyone was like, take it out, take it out. Yeah. And everyone's like, Whoa! But fuck yeah, Tom. And it was yeah. so good. That's great. It was crazy. Oh I my mean, God. There's only so many people that are like, let me pull this trumpet out. And everyone just like, yo, that just Listens. fucks. Yeah. But also there was something so incredibly pure and amazing and precious about the fact that no one took their phone out. I was literally just saying that to someone because like that would have been every single yep. person opening Snapchat and Instagram stories with their flash on in this dude's face. And yep. now like when I booked the place and they were like, oh, no phones allowed. I was like, whatever, like that's so LA. Aren't you glad we did but it? But then when that moment happened, I was like, this is a safe place for them to do cool shit like this that doesn't end up all over fucking yeah. social media with flashes in their face. This is the dumbest of dumb, 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 dumb comparisons here. Mm -hmm. But remember when we watched Spider-Man a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. The original one before the new one. Mm -hmm. And we like watched the scene where Peter's on the, in the bus. Sorry, you haven't seen it. In the bus, like deadish. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but everyone's just like staring at him yeah. versus like- Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After he like is on the subway right. and there's the whole situation. And of course today, if a superhero and literally if, like in this, the new Spider-Man, yeah. people are like literally have their phones out talking right. about like, it's been my guy's Peter Parker. Like, like the idea that in 10, 20, 30 years, max really, we went from, oh my gosh, I'm so consumed by this thing that's happening in real life that I can't think about anything else versus, oh my God, I have to record this so that I can, share it or think about it later, yeah. despite you never actually doing that? Yes. Huh. And so like one step further, we don't need our memories recorded from our brains. No, one step further, we've already been in the metaverse. Oh, <laughs> I don't even wanna go there. I don't even wanna go there. I, I just had a metaverse experience. And it was you did a metaverse. Stupid. You did. Um, okay, so uh, did we- Okay, no. wait, hang on. So Bruno Mars, the food was incredible. It I was also good. I also was like, okay, a lot of these like bougie LA places are overpriced, like super small portions and they're like very mediocre. I am dying yeah, to go, go back to we eat there. Go. The food was fucking incredible. I met the um, like- Oh, that's right, the owner guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we should figure out that. Um, and I got super, I've never done this before where I basically just like leave it as like an open bar for everyone that comes through from our group. And it, it was like very scary. Bet up or down from what you thought it was gonna be? A, it was only a little bit up from when I author, like what I authorized them to charge on my card. Got it. But like when they come up to you, basically how it works is that I authorize you for this much. Right. And then they come to you when they're like, okay, we've hit this much. What do you want to do? Right. And obviously like, I'm not going to be like, no, like cut it off. Everyone has to start making their own bills right now. Cause it right. was fucking like one o'clock in the morning. And so I was like, yes, okay, just keep, keep going. Like, Everyone keep, can keep, keep just drinking. It, keep drinking. You can just hear the background. I have 742. And, so yeah, literally right. there. and like half the people there like came with other people that I didn't even fucking know. Right. And um, yes, and it was very scary. But there was a few people who like randomly sent me fat Vemos. Well, towards the end of the night, I go, I didn't pay for any of this. Lauren paid for it all. Oh my That's God, what... I know. I wish you hadn't done that. I was like, oh my God, they're going to think that I'm like asking them for money. What do you mean? You weren't, I was doing it. No, I know. I know. But the, oh God. anyway, it was very nice of them. It was very generous. Yeah. And um, 
It was a great night. It was a very good night. I mean, like those are the nights you can't replicate. I was so sober the entire night. You were party planner. <laughs> literally like just like one to the next, the next, the next, the next, whatever. It I was know. like, you were so, um, uh, I don't know. You get so um cute when you're in like party planner for me mode. Well, I was doing my best to connect people to people. Cause like you have friends from like so many different walks of life I, that it's like- If you walk into my birthday party- Oh man, what you, a fucking you grab look, bag. You realize, holy shit, you have lived 47 lives, kid. Right, so our our married couple um, who's uh, from, our, our married couple friends mm -hmm. um, just got married and right. it's uh, the set designer and one of the judges from Craftopia and his husband who we've been hanging out with a lot. I introduced them to a guy that you worked with uh -huh. who does like crazy comic and fantasy sci-fi yeah, stuff. Uh -huh. And so him and his fiance are getting married in the spring. So like they have nothing in common, but I was like, you guys, wedding things, go. go. And so I was like, oh, and then you get to get married, only when you wins your wedding. And then like once they start talking, I slip away. And then I go do that 45 more times for other people. And all of my friends all share the, a common, um, a common thing or theme, which is they're all, incredibly talented at something yeah. that is so incredibly niche and weird and different, but they love that. And because people are just so very different, but just very good at what they do, I feel like, mm -hmm. they have everything and nothing in common all at the same time. Right. And I used to be so stressed about like, are these people gonna like, like, like each other? And now it's, I love watching people who either do have like a, a couple people in common or have n never met each other. They're like, are obsessed with each other, at, that are obsessed with each other at the end of the night. And now later on, I'm getting pictures of them together because mm -hmm. they're now friends. Yeah, yeah. It's adorable. I mean, also too, I think it's like you're 30 now and people need okay. to know how to be like social. You know what I mean? Like, well, most of our friends, they are rooted in the ages of 25 and 40, right? Right. So it's like, if you don't know how to figure it out, like, and chat with people around you at like a common social event, like. Just wait for this 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 era of children who, you know, spent half of their adolescence Oh my home. God. Yeah, exactly. That's why the, meta, the metaverse is coming faster than you think it is. The metaverse is fucking stupid. Uh, Rude. Uh, <laughs> you know, but this is the thing that I want to. I, I don't mean to spoiler alert for everyone who's not thirty yet. Yeah. But if you're wondering, what you when you wake up and you realize you're you are thirty. Yes. You know how it feels. The exact same. A lot like twenty nine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like I. I feel like my Botox is doing a wonderful job of of, of fending off any age that I don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We love Botox. I know. Yeah, big fan. And you can get Botox off at 30. Now, that'd be great. <laughs> we, we were checking out actually a Botox today. And I was so pissed off because Jeremy's uh, bill was half of mine. Yeah. They looked at me and they said, oh, you're fine. Like one, you're white. So you just naturally okay. are aging quicker than I am. That's not how that works. Two, your forehead is bigger than mine. Okay. Well. And you're just a larger person. So like- They shot you a lot though. Yeah, but yeah. I, I thought I thought it's because he was like, I'm not doing that much. I'm just spreading it out over. Mm. You know, they did shoot me. No, under his like, breath, he I was, was like, like, "You wrinkly bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where the fuck is my Asian don't raisin lifestyle? I'm busy raisining. Because I'm raisining. You're raisining. I'm raisining. You're, you're, you're just withering away. And so I paid three hundred dollars to not raisin. It's the cheapest Botox bill anyone's ever imagined. Yeah, except for yours at one fifty. That was the cheapest Botox bill. I got the pretty girl at the party um, discount. You know what? At Halloween, um, my friend went to a Botox discount um, called Botox. Oh. That's adorable. That's not safe. Um, Half off baby for Botox. Wait, speaking of the the 14th for Valentine's Day, when's Super Bowl? It's gotta be like the day or two or before after that. You right? are asking the absolute wrong person. Well, then I hope you don't wanna go if that's the attitude. You said you already got yourself a ticket and not me. Well, I. I mean, I can confirm I did get passage into both the Maxim and Sports Illustrated party. Motherfucker, if you think you're going to that by yourself as a lone male, well, no, I you can sit your ass down. It's with a, it's with a client. I'm not sure that I, I am the client. No, you're not the client. I am no. the client. Okay, is it? Okay, okay, okay. So for everybody out there who has a job that's social, if you get tickets to really, really, really cool things and you're not able to get another one, what are you supposed to do? You figure it out. But I'm not the one that's getting into these things. I got, I, I'm, I've, I was given Jeremy, pass, yes. You can finesse yourself into literally anything. But that doesn't mean I can and finesse so, it. And I, so if you can't finesse this, then I just feel like you just aren't very good at what you do. And in, in case anyone's wondering, this gaslighting toxic thing, that's, mm. that's, that's not healthy. 
finesse me in. I'll finesse the. <laughs> but... <laughs> Can't even finish that. <laughs> Every time I say anything stupid, I just hit your mother watches this podcast. Um, yeah, we'll have yeah. to do another mom DIY episode. We will. He or dad DIY, weeks. he'll hate that. No, he doesn't want to be a mom. He doesn't want to be a mom. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I, I'm I'm now 30, so I'm super wise. Yep. And uh, still don't own a yacht or a Tesla. That's okay. The Tesla's just never coming. No, at this point, it's just kind of like a, a fun game. Okay, so like let's recap all the things that we did on our on our on your birthday palooza week. My birthday palooza week looks a lot like a teenage ADHD. Jeremy was just like, let's just think about all the random. Dream, yes. Dreaming. Like and it was incredible. The biggest of things that could possibly happen and we'll just do it all the it same It was week. like being on vacation. Yeah. It was literally like being on vacation. Uh, where do you want to start? Okay, so the first night, so Jeremy's bestie Craig was here, Crypto Craig, mm -hmm. and we went to this arcade. It's like very Dave and Buster's-esque. It's called round one. Yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. We put way too much money on our little charge cards. No! Jeremy lost his immediately. I didn't lose it immediately. I was halfway through. <laughs> I was on a call talking about a thing that yeah. didn't even end up happening. When did that? I don't know where that drop went. Anyway, I was on a call, yeah. looks down, and I just nailed the little bang, the fucking yeah, the thing naked mole rat the thing. Yeah, that yeah, goes, yeah. Ding. yeah. Mm -hmm. and then I lost my card immediately. Right. And then you two, while I was on a call, found, you know the, the games where you sit in it and there's like the dirty little blankets fall on both sides? Oh, it was disgusting in disgusting. there. Disgusting. Like, if I hadn't have already just, had COVID, I, I would have- touching everything You're, you're for too. sure coming with COVID, 100%, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wow, I haven't thought about it. Arcades are potentially the, the biggest Petri dish. Oh, it's a germ cesspool. But to me, I think everyone should just at the age of two or three. Go in there. Go in there and just start it's licking like, stuff. It's like how, you know, you got thrown in the ball pit at McDonald's. That is how our immune systems were born. And then in college, you get thrown in the ball pit again. Ugh. Disgusting. Uh, and so we did that. No, no, in college it was foam parties. That's the that's the most disgusting cesspool of germs that I, I can was think of. A lot of balls in your face was the that was the metaphor I was going for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I think foam parties are even worse than balls in your face. Did you have a favorite themed party in college? Oh fuck yeah! Are you kidding? As like a DIY girl, ABC. Anything but clothes. Anything but clothes. Right. Absolutely. I don't know if that translates for like other languages. Other people, yeah, yeah. yeah. ABC. Latvia, could you tell us what ABC parties are in Latvia? Right. Actually, yeah. feel free in other languages too, is just let us know what an ABC- I would love to know everyone's favorite like themed party. Theme party. And don't feel like this isn't a good time to hop into a little bit of story time. That's that's welcome. Right. Yeah. Oh, so we had um, um, business bros and office hoes. Oh, that's good. Big fan of that one. That was fun. It's a little sexist. Business bros and office hoes, yeah. yeah. Or we could be business hoes and office, I mean, I don't know. Joes. Joes, I don't know. Um, big fan, uh, that was really fun. I, I'm down to dress up for anything. Like, you are. I love, I love being a sports fan because you get to dress up as fun things. I love Lauren Halloween. Lo yeah. yeah. Like I'm down to be a fan. You know though, I can tell now that um, I'm in this weird place with sports mm -hmm. where we're going meeting fancy people, but it's a sports game. Mm -hmm. You struggle with, wait, do I want to look like comfy, fun yes. sports bro? Or do I want to yes. look like sexy, cute? Not sexy cute, but like, do I need to be like somewhat like, not f foremost, not the right word, but like somewhat put together or can I wear like baggy ass Lakers sweatpants? And so what does she do? She wears a baggy shirt up top and a little bit of butt cheek out with like- um, The like, knee high booties yeah, or thigh yeah. high booties. Yeah, it's a great look. Yeah. Best of both worlds. Yeah. Party on the bottom, you this is on top. Of both worlds. You get the, meh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, So d round one arcade. Mm -hmm. And we, Craig and I were in the little zombie thing. We had You so, played so long, you beat the game. Well, you know what it was? I was like, cause we're not actually good at this, but because we had so much money on our charge cards, every time you can just re up on your life, right? Like normally you would just die and the game would end. And that is but a can, wonderful metaphor for nepotism. Oh my God. And you can literally just swipe and keep going, swipe. And so it, like one of us would die and just fucking swipe and keep going. If reincarnation is a thing, yeah. how do I sign up for the, 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 the trust fund rich from the beginning line? Yeah. Like what would I have? To, I just want to know. Those you know, kids end up damaged though too. I'll take damage with a trust fund over damage without a trust fund. I don't know if you would. I think it sounds great. I don't know if you would. No, I, yeah. I, Cause I, sometimes I, a broken family. Yeah, anyway, this anyways. Is the, this is the most like me thing I've ever heard. My mother and I, like we had a, we were talking today and she calls me and she goes, you'll never guess me. What? She goes, I talked to my, my tax person. I would make more money if I just retired today. <laughs> I was, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, like with my pension. Yeah, like, I'll yeah. literally make, I will make more money right. if I should stop working right now. And I go, so you retiring? She goes, no. I was like, but you were, you were talking six months ago about like how, okay, I think I want to like maybe do it like a year or two less and whatever. And now that you can leave, uh -huh. you don't want to. She's like, yeah, you feel good now. 
Yeah, she, I mean, people need structure. But I get it. I tell everybody, if I ever win the lottery and mm -hmm. have $20 billion to my name, you know, you'll Gone. find me on Monday. No. Gone. Working on something. Uh, mm, you've gone back and forth on this. I remember think, the last time we talked about you making a shit ton of money, you quit the podcast. I think, I'd, okay, I would quit revenue driving things, but I would I just see. become obsessed with doing something that had nothing to do with money. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Because I, I would want to accomplish a thing I hadn't accomplished before. I see. It's like, hey, I'm going to go cure something. Right. With right. no medical background whatsoever. Right. We're Let's gonna, go. We're going to cure Bubby's rash that he sometimes gets on his stomach. Right. Yes. And you could dedicate yeah. your life to that. I feel like you've dedicated your life to just being a hypochondriac foremost. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a weird lump on his neck that we're gonna get checked out this week. Really? <laughs> yeah. It, that one like, little the little one little bump in his neck. Yeah. It's kind of been there for a long time. You ever time. heard of the thing like I got the pimple? It's I've had, not, I've had an ingrown hair on my legs since oh my we started God. dating. I wanna pop it so bad. On my deathbed, Lauren. Yeah. At 47 years old. You know what? Old. If you ever get surgery for like teeth or something like that and you have to get knocked out, like you know, like if you get like your wisdom teeth taken out, I know yours are already out already, but like You know they come back if, sometimes. I can't wait. If crazy? you go under, I'm gonna ask if I can just come in the operating room and do my own little operation on your leg. Okay. I think you could finesse that. A hundred percent. Also, if you can't feel anything. I'd wake up and be like, yo, my leg hurts. <laughs> it's like, like infected. You and the doctor like, like <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Just, it's a nightmare down there. Just gangrene. I lose my whole leg because you wanted the ingrown hair out. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how unbearable I'd be? I wouldn't get up for Without anything. Without a leg? Yeah. Oh, they, we, we'd have to break up. No, we, we couldn't though. Especially like if I was if the one you were the root cause, that gave you gang, gangrene, oh, we'd only have to break up. There's grangine. no other, gangrene. Yeah. Grangrene. Can you imagine? We'd have to break you, up. No, you'd have to stay with me forever. I'd, I'd have to break up with you. You'd have to stay with me I'd forever. have to break up with you. Uh, because no. one, you'd be unbearable. And then two, it'd be another level of unbearable because it'd be my fault. Oh, I think we should do this. Lose your leg to gangrene. Yeah. yeah. And I should uh, amputate the, uh, the ingrown hair. Yes. Hmm. Now, every time we've kind of touched and picked at it before, you start screaming. Yeah. Okay, so um, we went to that, we did- um, No, uh, and then the worst part about that whole night is that we racked up so many points. We played games for oh four God. hours and without any fucking notice, this place closes their, their like gift reward section. And so we can't even go and redeem all the points we'd spent the whole night earning to get a giant plushie. I just want to say they had massive like, really cute plushies. And oh. I had my eyes set on a few different options. You would have like gone in there and got like a loaf of bread with a face on it. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. You know, I actually have a, a loaf of bread with a face on it. Yeah, his name's Moose. No, it's Weedy. It's so funny. Yeah, there's not his loafy. You literally just didn't give me any credit for that. It I'm is. over here just throwing one-liners. It was pretty good. Yeah. So we did that. Can I move on? Mm -hmm. Yep, next. Games. Games? Yeah, we did. It was The next night was games. No, next night was Lakers game. Yes, the next night we went to a game. Oh, I think you said games. No, I, I did, but like- Oh, like, yeah, I think you meant like board games, like fucking snakes no, and ladders. No, we did that. And then we went directly into, I think we like, next night we actually um, watched Euphoria and fell asleep. No, next night was your birthday party. Got it. That night was birthday party. Yes. Did not fall asleep. Um, the I, next I, night- I went home after the party. I was so sober and I was so tired. My voice was just shot. And I found an after party in Calabasas. Yes, until 7 a.m. <laughs> I went home at 1, 1 a.m. or 1.30 or whatever, got home, immediately took my ass to sleep. It was wonderful. I will say the the, the after party scene, when you're turning 30, mm -hmm. didn't look like the after party scene when I turned <laughs> 21. Mostly because- It was 10 dudes. The things that I prioritized when I was like, all right, we're gonna go out here. Like, we'll, no, 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 we'll, no, no, we'll keep drinking out there. It'll be fun. It'll be great. We'll get there. It'll be, it'll be good. And I got there and I was like, it's a bunch of uh, 20, really 30 year old to 55 year old dudes <laughs> who all look more or less like they're disheveled about to fall out of a bar. And no one was actively looking for hot single girls, which would have been the obsession at age 21. And I was like, things have really changed here. Yeah, I can't I, believe you stayed as long as you did. Well, half of it was because you're in Calabasas and right, getting, getting an Uber feels like a, a, just a yeah, truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I logged a solid like five, six hours of sleep before you even got home. Yeah. And then we got home and then we canned and immediately fell asleep and just to a coma. Don't forget the McDonald's somewhere in there as well too. I don't even remember that. Yeah, there's a McDonald's in there. There was a, there was a pancake. I feel like we can fast forward this. Uh, the rest of the weekend was great. <laughs> um, uh, my buddy uh, went from looking at what was a season one recap of Euphoria going Ugh, to, I think he's probably farther along in the season two than we are. He also said that he finished too hot to handle season three without what? us. He said he, he blew through the whole thing. How's Harry? Do we know? 
Harry. Not Jowzy. No, no, new Harry. Yeah, New Harry. Um, I don't know. I saw a spoiler though, because someone tagged me in a photo of them and was like, oh my God, I swear this was you. And actually from the side, the girl that he does end up with kind of did look like me in the photo. He ends up with a girl? Yeah, of course. They don't all end up with girls, do they? No, some of them go home. Yeah. There's actually one guy that I really want to get off the fucking show. I can't stand a couple of them. Yeah, same. Thing yeah. Too. So no, we we still have to finish Too Hot to Handle. Yeah. Euphoria, we don't have another episode of, of until next week. We should hack HBO. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real bummer that I don't, I don't, there's no like perks to that. Yeah. There, yeah. It's shockingly. Yeah. You don't even get like a family and friends past. No. Yeah. Not even a little bit. It's tough. Um, out of curiosity, did you want to talk about your imposter syndrome? Well, I mean, no, that's a, that's a, that's gonna be our next episode. Lauren, it's it's too long of a conversation. Essentially, here's here's the highlight: is that I'm drowning in imposter syndrome, and this has been a conversation I feel like that we've had before on the podcast mm -hmm. because I just can't shake it. Lauren, you know that things get real towards uh, the end of the podcast. I know, I know, I know, I know, but I don't I don't want to dive into it because all it's right, gonna just give be a high level, high level, high level, high level, high level. Get, give the tellies what you're what you're dealing with what because dealing. by next week it'll all be solved. <laughs> we said at the end of December too. Here I am, last week of January, like. <laughs> No, I just, I just am consistently and constantly drowning in imposter syndrome in almost everything that I do. And like, I don't, I don't know what the fix is. Everyone's just like, well, you've done this, 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 and this. And I'm like, yeah. It's not helpful. Yeah, it's just like, it's not helpful. So like, I don't actually know what like, I don't know what the the fix is. And like, I obviously I need to like go deep dive into like forums and white papers and stuff like that. But like, I've even talked about this with my therapist I don't a think any bit. white paper is gonna tell you how to feel good about yourself. No, but like maybe there's something like, I, I always like knowing like the literal brain psychology about like why your brain does certain things. Like that's helped me a lot to like rationalize um, how anxiety works. You know what I mean? Like that makes sense. What I'm thinking about like which part of the brain leads to this, What do, you know what I mean? Like that part I think can be enlightening. It, it might not fix things, but it, it makes me feel good to understand why it happens. So I don't, maybe maybe there's a few comforting things in a white paper, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. And I feel like therapists are usually just like, well, like, make a list of all the things you're you're grateful for and the things that you've like accomplished. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, like yes, I am proud of those things and I'm glad that they happened, but like, like it you still can only doesn't- like write my name down so many times. Right, exactly. I can only write down the fact that I'm dating Jeremy Lewis so many times. Just another article today about the boyfriend, Jeremy Lewis. No, I, I that is not even what that, that was, article They made, they went out of their way they to make it. it not be about boyfriend, Jeremy. It was fantastic. Yeah, that was like one of the first things we talked well about. Yeah. yeah, it was really right. well written. Um, but yeah, so I have imposter syndrome in genuinely every single thing I do, like YouTube, podcast, Craftopia. Imposter in podcasts? Yeah. What do you mean? Like just as like, as like, as like a host, a this, podcast host. The Tilly's fuck. This thing fucks. This the is great. Fuck. This Why is so fun. This is great. Why do you have imposter? I don't know. I haven't done everything what I do. What do you mean? <laughs> I haven't even thought about what? Uh. How do you have imposter syndrome about what we're doing right now? I, I don't know. I'm always just like, I, it's I, most of the time I'm fine, but like sometimes I get in my head about like anything I'm saying, you know what okay. I mean? And I think in your head before it even comes out. And then it's like, okay, well like it's the spiral, the cycle of like getting in your head before you say something. Mm -hmm. And then once that thing comes out, you get in your head about what you said. And then you, you know what I mean? It's like, a, it's just like a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. I would say podcast though, because it's also one of like the newest endeavors, I feel the, least amount of imposter syndrome. Okay. Same with Craftopia because I feel comfortable in that position of hosting. And I think there's also an element too of like not having to be, not having the pressure of being the main talent, right? Like I'm not the contestant, like I'm the person there to like help move the show along and to help the narrative and the commentary. Yeah. So I think not having that pressure on me helps a lot. So if I'm hearing this correctly, the thing that you've done the longest, you're the most insecure about. A hundred percent. What? Because it's like, when you've, when you've done it the longest, it's like the expectation every single day continues to be like, is, you know what? I literally watched a TikTok today where they were saying how like YouTubers are in their flop era. Okay. And I mean, I, they, they really did actually make a good, pretty good case in point for like why there's specific YouTubers who have flopped and like why they did that because they got themselves into, you know, X, Y, and Z. Okay. Like um, yeah, I'm not trying to drag anyone. We'll talk about that. I was that in after. names, I'm just saying like, what, what's the archetype? I mean, it's people who or it's like names, 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 became names, names, unrelatable names, names. and they isolated their audience by being ungrateful and disconnecting with them and just okay. focusing on like the material things of like getting rich and being famous or whatever. Okay. Like, and that makes sense. Like that's one plus one equals two, like that equals flop. Um, but one I, plus one equals flop. 
one plus one does equal flop. Okay. But I think that there's there's like a pressure when you've been doing it for so long to continue to reinvent yourself if you want to stay relevant. And I mean, we've talked about this before when someone like refines your content, con when someone refines your content and they're like, oh, I forgot about you. You know what I mean? Right. Like, there's no way that that doesn't dig a little bit deep in every influencer, whether they're two years old or 10 years old of making content. Well, I think it's a weird uh, mixture of when people reinvent themselves, mm -hmm. You would think that, hey, the whole point of being relatable is that people can continue, like, continue to relate to you. But I almost think that people that can successfully reinvent themselves introduce the new person to new fans. Totally. At the same time, reintroducing the new version of themselves to people that have already cared about them, but they feel like it's fresh. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like- So just do that. I, I mean, that's what I have been doing. Like that, <laughs> I'm kidding, And I yeah. think that like I did that really well and I'm continuing to do that. And like, I'm so much happier. And I've always said this, like I would rather make content where I'm authentic to myself for a hundred thousand people versus making like cello content for a million people. And like, I'll always truly believe that. But I mean, on the like- I'd probably pick a smaller number than a hundred thousand people. Like if it's just a hundred thousand people, if it's just them, I mean, it's a lot well, of people. I know, but when you think about sellout content that used to hit 10 million views, you know what sure. I mean? It's like, so I, that's just like the scale of what I'm thinking about like four or five years ago. Um, Listen, uh, Jeremy that needed to eat a cheeseburger hop, hopped up there and sang Disney Love Medley for millions of people. I get it. Not seeing my ass do that again. Come on, V2. Singing? 2022 edition. With my girlfriend? Oh, oh, with me? Oh God, no. It's like a no, parody. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Could be fun. <laughs> That'd be fucking hysterical. Could be fun. Could be fun. Could be. Could be fun. I just, you can't chase old views. Chase new shit. I'm not chasing old views. I'm chasing, it's not, it's not even about numbers. I'm chasing, See, I think that's the issue. You don't know what you're chasing. I don't know what I'm chasing. Well, because even like when I was, like I'm trying to think of like what my, my perspective and mindset was. It's like, I think about when I was still living in Toronto, when I was like right into kind of like right before things really took off, I feel like even then, like from, I'm thinking from then until now, like I still had imposter syndrome every single day about what I was doing, no matter what the numbers were. So I know it's not about the numbers because I'm not, chasing, like the goal is never to like attain Mr. Beast level numbers and be viral like that. Like that's not at all what I want. That's not a goal. But I think, I don't know. See, I don't, I don't fucking know. And that's part of it. I'm too- Okay. Don't, don't, what you know, what do you not want to do? Be a sellout. What's that mean? Like make content that I know will get clicks that makes me unhappy. Like? Like wearing, wearing six inch fake acrylic nails for 24 hours. Okay. You think that would <laughs> do well? People love that shit. Yeah? Yeah, people love that shit. So how do you use that? What do you mean? Why do they like that shit? Because it's like, it's, it's entertaining and also like out of like, it's kind of like random enough to be somewhat shocking and it adds a challenge element to it. Like I understand like what builds that. Like, and this thing, like I'm not, I'm just so lost in even what I'm lost in because like I have content ideas and I feel like my next month of content is actually really great and I'm, I'm happy about it and I'm excited about it. Um, but there's just like more that I want to do, but I don't really know what it is. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm a mess. See, this is why I don't want to talk about this because I'm still spiraling about what my spiral is even about. Do you want to go sit on the couch and cuddle and watch something? Yes. Tillies, we'll see you next week. Actually, I won't see you next week. Ooh! Oh shit, guys. Next week is the um, highly requested Asian Girl Squad episode. Guys, everyone do me a favor and don't watch it the first day just so it absolutely tanks, just so I can feel good about myself. Let's not do that. And then everybody that. the next day, Let's pile in. super not do that. Do I get to like make an appearance or how's this gonna work? Yeah, of course. Also, when you just set up the microphones for four people, so I definitely will need you. What, <laughs> is it Tuesday? Yeah. So next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Well, then you better like and subscribe on everything. You can go cuddle? Yes. Bye y'all. Bye. <laughs>